further into the history, it's like, you know, became like a key part of the Pinochet regime with the, all of the detention camps. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, even beyond that, um, you know, Operation Condor in general, which really combined the intelligence services across the Southern Cone. So Hold up. Not to interrupt you, but for those of our listeners who don't know, people who might have been searching for another podcast by mistake, people who just listened to us at the gym for white noise, can you please explain to them, what is Operation Condor? Well, Condor was a program that was initiated by uh, several of the different intelligence services in the Southern Cone, though really Chile was the the driving force behind it. And uh, at this particular time in history, there were, you know, Marxist insurgencies in practically every country in the Southern Cone. And the way a lot of these guys were able to sustain their movements is when things became too hot in the country, where the government they were trying to overthrow, overthrow they would just cross the border, hide out there, and, you know, wait till things died down. So a lot of these intelligence services, they wanted to be able to pursue them across borders, essentially. So this started as an arrangement where, okay, you've got a rebel group in Argentina and they flee into Chile. Well, you know, the Chilean service will go and arrest them, or maybe the Argentinians can just cross over to the border and kill them themselves, you know, but we'll figure out a way to eliminate them. So essentially there would be nowhere in the entire Southern Cone that they could hide whatsoever. Yeah. And it was so successful that they decided to expand it really to the entire world. So now you start seeing assassinations carried out in Europe, in the United States, where now, essentially, they wanted to put the mindset into everyone that there's nowhere you could hide from us. We will track you down to the ends of the earth, and we will kill you there. I, I think one of the things that's really interesting about, about Condor is because it, it, you know, it's happening also concurrently along with Operation Gladio in Europe, but it really is like, I mean, it's a combination of, of basically every scumbag in the Western <laughs> Hemisphere, and in that Southwestern Hemisphere, getting together. I mean, there are Cuban exiles. There are there's Pinochet. There's Klaus fucking Barbie. Um, it's 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 really astounding. And it was pretty effective too. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, on top of that, especially when you look at like uh, you know the Italian neo fascists and what have mm -hmm. you, um, people yes. like Stefano del Sayac and what have you. I mean, these guys were basically you know, I mean, they were involved in the the Gladio type operations in Italy, and then when they started to draw too much attention from the authorities, many of them were giving refuge in uh, the southern cone of South America, and then they went to work again on the stuff with Condor and what have you. So, uh, on top of everything else, there was direct overlap with the assets as well. So. So, you know, I mean, a lot of these guys, like you're saying, I mean, it's basically a collection of almost every scumbag on the planet at the time, and they're all kind of involved in these different programs and what have you. Um, and then in the case of, what was it, a Ginter Press uh, was a uh, quote-unquote press service that was set up in Lisbon and Portugal. It was comprised of all these, you know, veterans from the OAS, the French uh, types Wait, who had failed. Wait, journalist service? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was um, mm. essentially, okay, when you get into covert operations, there are two different facets of it, okay? You've got the paramilitary end, which is all the special operations forces guys and what have you. But on the other hand, you have psychological warfare specialists, which is closely entwined with all this. The British invented this, and when it was all, you know, originated with the Ministry of Economic Warfare, and you had the, prop, uh, the political warfare executive and the special operations executive in the same body. And these things were combined for a simple reason. Because you can go out into the countryside and assassinate an official, but if you don't have a psy war specialist to put it into context, you don't get the full effect out of it. Right, totally. And, and that all was combined in a place like Ginter, which was a totally private operation, essentially. I mean, it got funding from uh, the Portuguese intelligence services, but it got funding from a lot of other sources as well. And most of these guys, they were French, they were former Nazis, there were these neo you know neo fascist italians there pretty much a smorgasbord of rightists from across the world involved in it and it poses as a press service it put a lot of effort into penetrating the communists especially those associated with the chinese and what have you yep um so it's a big psychological warfare operation and um from the french perspective specifically it's to intoxicate these groups that was the you know the way they thought of it essentially intoxicate yes how do you, intoxication how do you I, 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 now that's well, the job of podcasters. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the French perspective, intoxication in this sense essentially meant the poisoning of the mind effectively. Mm. Okay, so yeah, French podcasters. Too. That's such a French way of putting all of it. Yes, yes, yes. It's like it always has to be the most romantic version of something. <laughs> so I, go, go on. 
So these again are guys, I mean, they got their press service, they're doing all their Psy War stuff, intoxicating the mind, poisoning the mind, and so on. But then they're also involved in carrying out terrorist operations. Mm -hmm, I mean, most mm -hmm. of the OAS guys were veterans of the, you know, the paratroopers and the French Foreign Legion. 